Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. Here's another uh, viewer question. Is it legal in an emergency to get on police or fire frequencies with your, say, $30 radio and call for help? This time on K6UDA Radio. So you have an emergency, you're wondering, can I use this $30 radio to directly contact police and or fire for assistance? Kind of a tricky question. We'll look at it from both a legal standpoint and a practical standpoint. It's not just as cut and dry as you may think. Stick with me. Before we get into this, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the subscribe button. It is actually right down there. And please give this video a big thumbs up. Consider supporting me on either Patreon or PayPal. And let's get to it. Ugh. So now, first of all, let's look at this from a legal standpoint. From a legal standpoint, can I transmit and receive on my little bow fang, or as you purists like to call it, the bow fang? Can I do this legally? So from the FCC regulation part 97, which governs all of us ham radio operators, part 97.111 authorized transmissions, subsection A sub C, and this is how we cops read the law. Transmissions necessary to exchange messages with another station in another FCC regulated service while providing emergency communications. For all of you would-be FCC attorneys and FCC policemen out there, here's a little hint. In the world of law and criminal law, we read the statute. The statute says what it says and we do not interpret. So the FCC also felt it necessary to talk about uh, another kind of emergency, which they call a station in distress. Part 97.405 sub A. No provision of these rules prevents the use by an amateur station in distress of any means at its disposal to attract attention, make known its condition and location, and obtain assistance. According to the FCC regulations, yes, Virginia, you can use the $30 radio the $300 radio, the $3,000 radio on any frequency, on any band whatsoever if you are a station in distress. Now, what is a station? Is this my station here? Is this my station? Literally speaking, I am the station. So if I, the station, am in distress, this is my tool to become undistressed. Now we do run into some funny other little things like state laws. And there can be state laws that would prohibit you from getting on certain frequencies that are used by police or fire. And those can be misdemeanors in those particular states or jurisdictions. So you wanna watch out for those. So, here's my advice. Please don't take anything I say as legal advice as I am not an attorney. If you have been half eaten by a bear and you're surely going to die and the bear has also eaten your cell phone and this is all you have, and you're by yourself in the woods, the bear is standing there, ready to take his next bite. If you feel the need, if you think that this is the only way you can attract attention and try to get 
help, by all means, use it. Even if it's illegal to do so in the state in which you're in, you've got to find a district attorney that is willing to press charges and take you to court. Would you have sympathy from a jury walking into a court in a wheelchair half eaten by a bear? Yes. Really? Walking into the court in a wheelchair? Well, Bob, that is just stupid. Would any district attorney in his right mind press charges against somebody in those kinds of circumstances? No, it isn't gonna happen. So legally, you're okay. All right, so now that we've answered the legal question on whether you can do this and not go to jail, let's talk about the practical implications of how to do it. First of all, you've got your trusty Baofeng in the field. Baofeng. And you have this great emergency, this life-threatening, you are a station in distress. Do you have the frequency of said police department or fire department programmed into your radio? Do you have the offset frequency, that is the transmit frequency of said police department, fire department programmed into your Baofeng? Baofeng. Do you have the proper PL codes to trigger the repeaters and make the whole system work uh, programmed into your Baofeng? Baofeng. And as a note, Police departments do not make these things public. Let's say you've got a friend and you've got this all dialed in. So you've got, uh, you've got the receive frequency, the transmit frequency, and the proper PL codes to make this work. Most police departments these days are using a trunked or P25 type system. This is a digital radio system. This is an analog radio system. Doesn't work. But let's just say, for the sake of argument and imagination, that you have all the frequencies programmed into your radio, you have the PL codes, you have the offset frequencies, the police department that you are actually trying to get a hold of is also on an analog system. So all the pieces and parts are working there and under normal circumstances, in a normal city, you might be able to hit their repeater and you might be able to get in and talk to a dispatcher or possibly talk to an officer. You're most likely going to be, what, miles away in the back country without cell phone service. And if you're without cell phone service, these things are going to have very limited range. I would implore you before you rely on this Baofeng, Baofeng. to get you out of a life-threatening emergency in the field that you take this radio, you put it on a simplex frequency, and you try to contact a friend of yours just a few miles away on simplex and see how easy that is for you uh, through trees, over hills, uh, through neighborhoods, whatever, but have a few obstacles in there just for good measure. Let's just say that you have met all of your challenges, your legal challenge number one, your physical challenge of having the radio and having it programmed correctly for the police department that you're going to try to contact. Number three, that the police department is actually using an analog system and you can actually contact them physically with the same type of equipment. <sighs> and you have tested your equipment and your equipment is capable of traveling that type of distance with the RF that it is putting out. Your fifth and final obstacle of the day is to try to convince the cop or the fireman on the other end that you're a legit caller. You're legitimately in distress. You're not a bad guy. You're not, uh, you're not somebody who stole a police radio. You didn't just get a hold of this radio by breaking into a police car, a police station, or a firehouse. You're not a lunatic who is hell-bent on ambushing a cop that would drive up and into 
whatever area you are trying to get these cops and firemen to drive up and expose themselves to. Now, how likely is it that you are going to successfully use this radio to contact the police or fire in that, in that type of an emergency? Although it is slim, it is nonetheless possible. And if it is possible, I would love to hear from somebody who has successfully done this. And I would love to hear the, uh, the 911 dispatch tapes that would go along with it that would be proof or some an incident report that we could look up. If you enjoyed this video, again, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, hit that subscribe button, the bell notification right next to it. Please, uh, here is an email link down here. And uh, if you haven't already checked out my Patreon or my PayPal links, please do it. Consider supporting the channel. I will see you next time. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.